Good morning. Today is a very historical day for uh, Sri Lankan Palliative Services because uh, we are going to start the first virtual symposium on World Hospian Palliative Care Day 2021. Uh, this year theme is No One Left Behind, Equity in Access to Palliative Care. Uh, today, objective of this symposium uh, is to share the experiences of those who are working for the palliative care services, especially hospital setup, uh, hospice setup, and community care. So then, as you know, uh, actually, I would like to welcome all of you for this uh, very special virtual symposium on this day. Uh, actually, you know, there is a 40 million people, those who need palliative care in the world. Out of th those, 78 people need uh, palliative care from low and middle income countries. So, uh, in addition to that, in Sri Lankan setup, 89,000 people has been need for palliative care. Uh, we have a strategic plan from 2019 to 2023. So then you will be able to uh, give update about our situation of palliative care in this uh, course. First of all, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Lakshmi Somatunga, Additional Secretary Public Health Services for this very important event. Madam, your guidance and uh, Partnership is really appreciated for Sri Lankan Palliative Services. At the same time, I would like to warmly welcome Dr. Champika Vikramasinghe, Deputy Director General, NCD, and Additional Secretary, Pharmaceutical Supply and Regulation Ministry. Madam, your guidance too, we really appreciate to improve the palliative services in Sri Lanka. So then, uh, Director General Health Services, she will not, uh, he will not attend due to his busy schedule. At the same time, I would like to welcome Dr. Nirosha, Irosha Nilavira, who is joining with us to give overview of this uh, Sri Lankan situation. So then we have a very special guest today to share the international uh, uh, experience. He is Professor M. R. Raj Gopal. Sir, we are in, on behalf of the Sri Lanka and all the palliative care members, we would like to uh, welcome you in special manner to share your experiences. At the same time, uh, SLMA president and her team, Dr. Padma Gunaratna and her team, will join with us today to launch the second edition of the palliative care manual. Uh, and also, I would like to welcome Ms. Nisan Sala Karuna Ratna. She will give overview of uh, voice of the palliative patient. At the same time, I would like to welcome all, uh, all the uh, hospital team who are representing from uh, Apeksha Hospital Maharagama, Teaching Hospital Karapitya, uh, Teaching Ho District General Hospital Noor Eli and District General Hospital Mondragala. Uh, those who are giving their experience with us. At the same time, I would like to give special, I would like to welcome uh, Miss Shamala Fernando and uh, Mr. Edri Singer, uh, public health nursing officers, who, those who are sharing experiences with us. So then, uh, I would like to welcome all the founder members, as well as the representative from uh, Hospice uh, in Sri Lanka, Palliative Care Association, Santa Sevana Maharagama, Cancer Care Association, Hospice, Anradhapura and Mahathara, Satisai Sua Sevana Hangwella, Ken Hospi, Jaffna, and Sri Lankan Cancer Society, uh, Santa Sevana Maharagama. So then, uh, very special appreciative note for you all, because you are last sharing your experience with us. Uh, at last, not least, I would like to welcome, warmly welcome, all of you who are joining with us, consultants, caretakers, as well as nursing officers and the general public. 
thank you so much for joining with us to mark the uh, World Hospice and Palliative Care Day 2021. So then this is a very special symposium because first time in Sri Lanka, we are marking the World Hospice and Palliative Care Day uh, in virtual manner. This will be able to uh, share your experience as well as there is an opportunity for answering question and answers. So then uh, uh, I hope we will have a fruitful day. Thank you so much for joining with us. We, without any uh, delay, we will start our program. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to invite the Deputy Director General, Non-Communicable Diseases, Ministry of Health, and the Additional Secretary to the Ministry of uh, Pharmaceutical Production, Supply and Regulation, Dr. Champika Vikramasinghe, Madam. Uh, she will join virtually. Over to you, Madam. Good morning. World Hospice and Palliative Care Day. Good morning. World Hospice and Palliative Care Day is for action to support and to improve awareness on palliative care and hospice around the world. It takes place on the second Saturday of October every year. This year, it is on 9th of October 2021. The theme of this year is Leave No One Behind Equity in Access to Palliative Care showing that palliative care needs to be provided in accordance with the principles of universal health coverage. All patients with life-threatening diseases sh should be receiving palliative care according to the need, irrespective of the illness or its stage and other characteristics of the patient, such as age, sex, ethnicity, religion, or the income status. Palliative care does not replace other forms of care. It can be integrated into existing care and should be a part of the care given to everyone with a life-limiting illness. At the time when someone first finds out that his disease cannot be cured, he may be active, busy with work and family life and may be on treatment such as chemotherapy. Palliative care should begin alongside with other treatments, helping with different difficult symptoms and giving emotional and spiritual support to the patient and the family. The need for palliative care in Sri Lanka will continue to grow as a result of the aging of population and the rising burden of non-communicable diseases and some communicable diseases. National Strategic Framework for Palliative Care Development in Sri Lanka 2019-23 was published by Ministry of Health in 2019. Its main objective is to provide palliative care through evidence-based, multidisciplinary and cost-effective approaches. Though palliative care is identified as a key component of the healthcare system, it is challenging to get due priority for palliative care in the health delivery system. However, palliative care is still an evolving area and has a long way to go in Sri Lanka. With the increase in the establishment of services, quality of life of those suffering from life-threatening illnesses and their families, there will be a better future than what they receive at present. To achieve equity in care, we all have to work hard in ensuring all our activities finally achieve our objective that is leave no one behind thank you thank you very much madam uh, your guidance and encouragement for the palliative uh, care services is really appreciated thank you once again thank you so much now i would like to uh, invite dr lakshmi somatunga additional secretary public health services to address you over to you madam are you born very good morning to all of you. I'm very pleased to be a part of this very great thing. That is why I came here, even without joining uh, via Zoom, I thought I should honor the invitation and I should appreciate the efforts 
taken by all the members of organizing committee of this great work virtual symposium. Also, I am very pleased to observe that Sri Lanka is joining hands with the rest of the world to celebrate this great day in a meaningful manner. We should not restrict only to the day, but the activities should be continued and very pleased to see that we continue the activities. And this year's theme, leaving no one behind, equity in access to palliative care is very appropriately chosen. Because when you take the most of the countries in the world, palliative care is not a part of universal health coverage. So we hope that global attention will be drawn on this subject and this will be a very much part of universal health care and proper funding, a continued sustainable funding will be ensured to this discipline. As I said, not only in a meaningful manner, but we Sri Lanka, we celebrated the day in a very, very historic manner as well. Because on the very World Palliative Day, uh, on 9th itself, we established the first ever College of Palliative Medicine in this country. So I am the very proud first president of this prestigious college. We have a vision and we have members who joined the college as founder council members who have great enthusiasm. We will ensure that capacity building is done properly and we will get the focused attention on this discipline. There are things we can do as a responsible citizen and there are many things we can do as a responsible professional as well. While appreciating this excellent work coordinated by our cancer control program in Sri Lanka, I want to appreciate the great work done by Palliative Care Trust in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Cancer Society, and also Cancer Care Association and Palliative Care Association of Sri Lanka as well. And I never forget those who work in our hospices in Sri Lanka making the lives of care seekers very comfortable. The dedicated staff work at our Sri Lankan hospices and all over the world for their gentle care. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam. Uh, especially your encouragement, guidance uh, for us to improve the palliative care services is really appreciated. At the same time, Madam, I congratulate you as the first president of the College of Palliative Medicine. We are really happy about that. Thank you so much, Madam. Now, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Irosha Nilavira, consultant community physician. She is the unit head of the palliative care, palliative care at the uh, National uh, Cancer Control Program. She will o may o give an overview of strategic framework on palliative care services and current development of palliative care services uh, conducted by National Cancer Control Program. Over to you, Nidosha. Uh, thank you, Madam. Good morning. Uh, to a well palliative care and hospice day 2021 with the, this year theme, leave no one behind equity in access to palliative care, which is more appropriate for the today's uh, context. So I, I will briefly go through the, uh, like uh, 
why, why uh, as a country we need uh, palliative care services and background and the current situation and what is the way forward for the uh, palliative care services in Sri Lanka. To start with, uh, all of us know that uh, Sri Lanka has a population around 22 million and uh, we have like uh, annual deaths around 150,000. So according to the world estimates, it says around 60 patients of all deaths need palliative care. Uh, so when it comes to Sri Lanka, it is around uh, 89,000 people per year. But it's sad to say currently uh, we are unable to give majority of these uh, patients uh, the palliative care services with holistic approach. So uh, when it comes to the palliative care development in Sri Lanka, like uh, we have uh, started providing palliative care services in structured manner uh, way, uh, behind like uh, in uh, mid 20th century and we have passed several important milestones in palliative care services development in Sri Lanka. One is like uh, for an example, National Cancer Institute of Sri Lanka was founded in 1956 and uh, identified as essential component of onco services, the palliative care services. After that, the, the, when it comes to the cancer patient, uh, gradually in 20th century, century uh, extended the services with 25 cancer treatment hospitals to cater island-wide population, which uh, included the uh, palliative care services also in cancer care. Since then, uh, initiatives from uh, government as well as non-governmental organization introduced to the palliative care services in country and uh, gave direction for the improvement of services. So another important milestone is like uh, after the World Health Assembly resolution on palliative care, uh, Sri Lanka identifies the, um, uh, the palliative care as an essential component in uh, the comprehensive health care service delivery. And after that, uh, the Ministry of Health and the government of Sri Lanka included palliative care into ma many uh, policy documents. Like uh, example, National Health Policy 2016-2025 identified the palliative care as a part of the mainstream of health care in the country. Parallel to th that, many other policy documents and the strategic framework identified the palliative care as an essential component in health care service delivery. So another major milestone in palliative care services in Sri Lanka is establishment of National Steering Committee for Palliative Care, chaired by the Director General of Health Services, which happened in 2012. And uh, it makes the recommendations to the National Advisory Committee on Cancer Prevention and Control, and uh, like contributed uh, many ways to development in palliative care services in Sri Lanka. Uh, and also the Ministry of Health identified the National Cancer Control Program as the focal point for the palliative care services in the country. Also important milestone. So uh, with this development, the country identified the need of a development a national strategy framework for palliative care development in Sri Lanka to give a much structured way forward for the country uh, palliative care service program. And so with the leadership of the National Cancer Control Program in two, uh, 2019, uh, Sri Lanka developed a national strategic framework with 11 strategic directions which shows the uh, future direction for the National Palliative Care Services Program in Sri Lanka. And these strategies are supported by the National Strategic Plan Cancer Prevention and Control as well as the National Strategic Plan in Non-Communicable Disease in Sri Lanka. So in these strategies, uh, we identify the, like the integration of palliative care services uh, to, uh, with the all different level of healthcare, uh, namely tertiary, secondary, primary, as well as the community, and also need of a skillful, uh, a skillful uh, human resource, and also the availability of guidelines and protocols, and the availability of continuous supply of medicine and technology, and the partnership between the government and the non-governmental organization, empowerment of the community and the 
family members and informal caregivers, and the research and monitoring uh, and evaluation. So uh, when it comes to the integration of palliative care services across the all level of services, cu currently specialized palliative care services provided at the major hospital. For an example, for the cancer patient, it is available for the 25 cancer treatment hospital distributed island wide. But when it comes to the Apeksha Hospital, which is the National Institute of the uh, Cancer in Sri Lanka, it has uh, like uh, moved forward and they have established a fully paid uh, palliative care service in this hospital with an interdisciplinary approach and the link with the community care. And other, some selected hospitals also like move forward and uh, establish interdisciplinary approach. Uh, for an example, uh, teaching hospital Karapitiya, teaching hospital Radnapura, district general uh, hospital Nuareli, and district general hospital Monagal. So other hospitals also, we are moving forward that direction on establishing services with interdisciplinary approach. So another important milestone in the services in palliative care Sri Lanka is establishment of uh, palliative care center with inward facilities for palliative patients in the teaching hospital Karapitiya in 2020. And we are planning to establish uh, more centers like that in provincial basis. When it comes to the primary care level, so uh, presently at a different extent, uh, the, through the primary care system, we are providing palliative care services using primary health care hospital, OPD settings, and the family practices. But we have a long way to move forward in that direction. And also home-based palliative care services provided by the public health nursing officers who are appointed by the Ministry of Health. So, so I must say, though palliative care is identified as a key component in healthcare system, it is challenging to get the priority of palliative care in the health delivery system and implementation of services throughout the country. So in the recent past, several steps have been taken by the Ministry of Health. For an example, strengthened human resources uh, at the national level, and also last year, Ministry uh, of Health issued a circular instructing to establish palliative care services with uh, interdisciplinary approach at uh, major hospitals and the harder identification for the MO palliative medicine in uh, major hospital and. Uh, uh, development of shared care clinical record for proper document, uh, documentation of integration of services and appointing public health nursing officers attached to the primary care institution who will be uh, playing the key role in home-based care. However, even though Sri Lanka has a uh, well-developed uh, primary health care system when it comes to the palliative care services, it is at the early stages of integration of palliative care into the primary health care system. So recent past, there are a few steps we have taken, and like uh, the establishment of home-based palliative care services with public health nursing officers who are attached to the primary care hospitals, but I must say still uh, in, there is insufficient numbers of PHNOs in the country, and we have to strengthen this system uh, to regular recruitment of this category in the future to the Ministry of Health. And also, like facilitate the palliative care services in the uh, primary care services, the protocols and guidelines are being developed. For an example, palliative care for cancer patients at primary health care uh, was published, uh, is underprinted, and uh, going to be published in the near future. So another major strategic direction is uh, available, uh, make available skilled interdisciplinary human resources for the palliative care services. Uh, there are some major activities are undergoing, including postgraduate, undergraduate training, and incorporating the aspect of palliative care into the basic and in-service training programs. So. Uh, with, under that, uh, like uh, with the partnership of the Leon Center of Palliative Care Singapore, like we were able to uh, train our team of master trainers who are giving us support for the in-service training programs currently. And also, uh, Sri Lanka, we established a palliative medicine a diploma for medical officers uh, in two, uh, 2018, and also now at the moment undergoing the cu curricular development 
for the specialists for palliative medicine. Uh, and in the near future, it will be also established. And uh, other than that, introduction of palliative care uh, into the relevant undergraduate uh, medical discipline and other relevant disciplines also in progress. Uh, when it comes to the in-service training, uh, NCCP conducted many skill building programs throughout the years. And uh, even amidst of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, last two years also, we were able to uh, conduct many tra uh, training programs, like team building training program for the hospital staff uh, with palliative care teams and the uh, training of primary health care professionals. And there we have used uh, many uh, uh, many uh, different strategies to overcome the, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic and also we are planning to uh, continue our in-service training program using different strategies in the future like developing distant learning modules for the uh, then we can get a wider coverage at the regional level. So some uh, few specific activities during, uh, that we conducted during the COVID pandemic is uh, like the, there was a virtual training program for the primary health care doctors with the support of the, all the relevant consultants and we discussed the different aspects on palliative care and cancer care and also there is a Zoom lecture series conducted for the PHNO, how to look after a palliative patient uh, in the community during this pandemic and develop a guide for the caregivers to protect the palliative patient uh, in the, uh, from COVID-19 in the community. We need to come to the promoting partnership and, uh, with non government organizer, it is also one of the major strategic direction. And at the moment, there are seven hospices provided services island-wide, all are governed by the non-governmental organizations, and they closely link with the hospitals in the Ministry of Health when providing services. So not only uh, the non-government organizer providing the hospital services. They, in addition, they involve in the capacity uh, building programs in many ways, like for an example, task force of the palliative care and end of life care of Sri Lanka Medical Association and Palliative Care Association Sri Lanka. Uh, they also like conducting uh, capacity building programs in different levels. And other than that, they involve in developing guidelines and uh, protocols. For an example, Task Force of Palliative Care and End of Life Care, Sri Lanka Medical Center, they have published a palliative care manual for the management of non cancer patients. So, uh, to continue with the promoting partnership, the NCCP was able to uh, conduct first ever one day training program on providing basic palliative care for the island-wide hospice staff uh, in uh, 2020 with uh, like strengthening our partnership uh, with the non-government organization. And we also uh, developing the standard operating guideline with the uh, contribution of the relevant stakeholders and it's in the final approval stage. So other than these uh, non-government organizations, NCCP is conducting uh, awareness programs like um, community supporting organizations like Sarode, who have a large network of volunteers. Like uh, we are conducting uh, awareness programs for them to get the support of them also in the palliative care services in the future. So empowering family members and caregivers also a major strategic direction that we identify we have to move forward. So in recent past, we uh, were able to develop a structured training module for standardized training of caregivers and common, uh, community volunteers on provision of home-based palliative care. So in the native languages in Sinhala and Tamil, which will uh, give more coverage to the uh, informal caregiver training in the future. And also, uh, in addition, we have developed awareness booklet for the caregivers in Sinhala and Tamil language to empower the caregivers of adult and childhood patients in the community. And, uh, in CCP, in the process of developing a distant learning module for the informal caregivers, Sinhala and Tamil in the community, uh, with the support of WHO, uh, which will ensure more coverage uh, for informal caregiver training in the future. So, uh, we need to come to the ensure the availability of drugs and technology. Uh, 
or for the provision of palliative care at all levels. Uh, we have passed many milestones, like pain management uh, guideline for the adults with cancer in 2000. But I must say there are many gaps, like uh, we have to uh, move, move forward with, like uh, we have to ensure the uh, drugs are available at all levels with continuous supply. So now we are working on uh, that uh, strategic direction also. Finally, I would uh, like in my presentation, mentioning what is the way forward for our national program. We have, uh, like, we have to move forward uh, several strategic directions. One is capacity building, including all levels, and improve the community participation in palliative care, and also uh, establish the proper referral system which uh, uh, facilitate the integration of services throughout all levels, and improve the medicine and technologies in, at all levels with the continuous supply, and we should develop a good monitoring and evaluation system for the palliative care services in Sri Lanka. So that will end my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam. Now I would like to invite our director, the National Cancer Control Program, Dr. Janaki Vidhanapathirana, uh, to share the next session of the keynote speech by Professor M. R. Raj Gopal. Thank you, Madam. Over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Dulangi. Uh, once again, I would like to warmly welcome uh, Professor M. R. Raj Gopal for this uh, session as the uh, keynote speaker. Now, I am uh, honored to read the citation of, the, uh, of uh, Professor Raj Gopal. Professor Raj Gopal is the director of the WHO Collaborating Center for Policy for Training on Access to Pain Relief at Trevandam Institute of Palliative Sciences and the founder chairman of Pallium India, a charitable trust. His initiative led the development of government policy on palliative care in the state of Kerala in 2008 and to a national palliative care strategy uh, for India in 2012. He won Elizabeth Des Forges Award from Human Rights Watch for Extraordinary Activism in 2014 and Award for Excellence in Pain Management from International Association for uh, Study of Pain in 2009. Not only that, the award for Mary Newsten, Mary Newsbender Award of uh, 2019 2009 nine. In 2017, he was named one of the 30 global, global visionaries in palliative care by American Academy for Hospice and Palliative Medicine. In 2018, the government of India confirmed on him Padma Sri, it is third highest civilian award. So no wonder, sir, we, you will enlighten our uh, professionals who are engaging in palliative care services in your keynote address. Over to you, sir. Thank you. I start by our traditional <coughs> greeting, namaskara. Uh, the word uh, really means, I bought the divine in you, I truly do. What I heard so far about your achievements are truly remarkable. In 1997, I remember <clears throat> treating a person in Colombo over email and phone calls. You had morphine at that time and at that time my unit did not have. Maybe. Uh, because I knew the son of the patient personally, sorry, the daughter of the patient personally, I could work with her day to day in adjusting the medicines, etc. But you had no problem with access to oral morphine. It was only in the sub subsequent year that we could access uninterrupted supply of morphine. From then on, you have gone from strength to strength. It has been truly remarkable. And now that the College of Palliative Medicine is open, I'm sure you are going, going to go from strength to strength. 
before i share my screen <clears throat> i want to share some thoughts with you <clears throat> the college i expect will be concentrating on education naturally truly so but in medical education education is never complete without clinical application the the scheme that we arrived at recently in our trivandrum institute is the function as demonstrating educating and facilitating i believe conducting courses alone achieves precious little it does achieve a little but only a little what we saw over many years uh, that uh, we are here down south in india very close to you uh, a, a flight much shorter than uh, my flight to another uh, city in india like mumbai that close and this huge country is so vast with one sixth of the world's population that many things are very hard to achieve it's too unwieldy in this country so we checked to see what was the outcome of all the people who we trained and we found that these doctors and nurses who get trained and go to a remote part in the northeast or in the north practically are by themselves with no hand holding no one to talk to no one to ask doubts to and then we decided just doing courses is not enough we will have to provide continuous continued support and the benefit is mutual oh my god they teach us so much because we are also in an early stage of development of palliative care and this mutual learning is happening by mutual mentoring they sharing their experiences and we learning new problems and new solutions so to repeat the functions are demonstrating educating and facilitating when i say demonstrate uh what are we demonstrating and maybe at this point of time with your permission ma'am i will share my slide i believe what will be we will be demonstrating will be a new normal in healthcare sorry let me just put it on slide show in we do we need this new normal in healthcare traditionally uh, i expect the same thing will hold true for you my medical education was almost completely concentrated on diseases mostly about diagnosis and treatment of diseases a little bit about prevention also but about diseases if we are to demonstrate truly healthcare this healthcare has to be truly healthcare health being defined as physical social and mental well being if we look at the last half century medical science certainly has made huge advances like art with the hiv is no longer the dreadful thing that it was it is a controllable disease and uh, so much of imaging that we are now precisely able to diagnose diseases hands what miracles have we achieved with prevention as a child i remember coming out of my middle school class one evening and my close friend patmini was waiting and cousin was waiting outside with streaming eyes to tell me that the young friend five year old friend whom i played with last weekend had died of diphtheria polio so many uh, diseases and every day trouble like helminthiasis scabies so many things plagued us most of those things are a thing of the past now 
and how far has longevity increased true healthcare has made tremendous advances huge achievements certainly have been there nevertheless we still come across these stories this happened in my own state of kerala kerala being the state in india which uh, has at least 15 times more palliative care than the rest of the country a state where since 2010 every primary health center has a full time palliative care nurse and gives a home visit at least once a month to every bed bound patient that's not enough but that's a million times more than nothing these things have happened yet this also happens a couple killed their son before committing suicide in the hospital and the suicide note said they decided to take this extreme step because they were unable to tolerate their son's pain now i'm sorry there is a hurricane and rain right outside it is tremendous it's causing a lot of noise and uh, excuse me for a second let me try to close the door and see if the noise is less thank you for patience ladies and gentlemen are you still able to hear me despite the noise outside are you able to hear me yes oh thank yes, you yes we can hear thank you thank you uh and these tragedies continue to happen though i was bragging a minute back saying that my state of kerala has 15 times more palliative care than the rest of the country judging by morphine consumption our access to palliative care or at least access to pain relief is only 1 in 150 of what it should be the global figure well eastern sorry uh, western european countries are supposed to have the most optimal palliative care delivery system and their consumption is being compared i am not comparing it to the other extreme of uh, united states of america or canada so we still have this huge problem i don't know if this happens to you in your country but i can't remember the number of people who have come to me with a scar around the neck trying to commit suicide and somebody cutting the rope and saving them in my country uh uh to, this is purely in my state of kerala thousands commit suicide and the economist intelligence unit puts us among the worst 15 countries in the world as far as end of life care is concerned these are the sad state of affairs in most asian countries except a few affluent countries uh, in most of uh, south asia and southeast most of southeast asia the situation is not very very much better so as i said health is defined as physical mental and social well being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity and unfortunately not only we do not provide that physical social and mental well being we don't treat pain we don't uh, usually uh, detect or do anything serious about mental or social well being and in addition we are actually worsening health care india and bangladesh happen to be among the worst 12 countries in the world in terms of catastrophic out of pocket health expenditure sri lanka is much better much better but that's not saying much 
this is the reason uh, why i say in healthcare a new normal is essential the world health assembly uh, 67 said today's healthcare is not healthcare it offers mostly diagnosis and curative treatments and not infrequently it destroys health another way in which health is destroyed by healthcare is in the cruel application of uh, inappropriate end of life care uh, this this uh, lady whom you see before in the screen was a destitute she had one daughter who could not look after her because her husband was a drunkard and would not allow the old woman in the house she was in a poor home being cared for by nuns and there she developed cancer if it was detected early she could have been cured but she did not get the right treatment and her cancer became advanced we actually had to pay send a money to the daughter send some money to the daughter so that she could leave her children with a neighbor pay for their food and actually take a bus and come over to stay with the mother but during the last 5 days she got tender loving care the i one of the pictures that i cherish in my mind is the image of the daughter sitting by the mother's bed always with a hand on the forehead and she died like that i fear that with the transformation of healthcare to what it is tomorrow this may be the fate that are that awaits me i have written it my, my advance directive i have discussed this with my family yet i fear that things may be taken out of their hands and that i may be pushed into this thing and uh, i am a i am an anesthetist i was an intensive care doctor for many years i know that again that intensive care can miraculously save lives by minute to minute monitoring of organ functions and minute to minute interventions so that people can be restored to near normal life but when there is an incurable progressive illness when it's a matter of dementia or advanced metastatic cancer allowing people to die like this is a violation of all fundamental principles of medical ethics yet this is happening more and more the more the money you have the more you are subjected to this cruelty one of my friends who underwent uh, artificial ventilation for 5 days he said a heart beat had going down his throat when he was not sedated or felt like a red hot iron being pushed into him and twisted as it was withdrawn we are subjecting dying people to imprisonment solitary confinement without human beings around only masked creatures walking around and inflicting punishment into every orifice in the body constantly this is no way for human beings to go people deserve compassion people deserve love people deserve hugs and a kiss on the cheek those are the precious things in end of life care in addition to physical comfort then i sorry i don't have the figures for sri lanka but of the 61 million people found to have serious health related suffering purely going by 20 common conditions there are many still left out uh 10 million we have in our country the proportion which you get judging by population could be the same and remember we are not only talking about cancer of the 10 million only about 1.5 million in our country is likely to have health related suffering because of cancer remember 85% of health related suffering comes from other diseases in 2014 the world health assembly asked all member countries 
to integrate palliative care into all health care you are going to have a college of palliative medicine we am i saying this i hope your college of palliative medicine would be empowering people for this integration not only for creating palliative care clinics here and here and there but actually to allow the whole healthcare system to integrate palliative care at all levels primary secondary and tertiary across the continuum of care from the beginning of the suffering to the end by now i suppose yeah, it's clear to everyone that palliative care is not only for the dying palliative care is not only for cancer palliative care is for all serious health related suffering not by referral to mainly not by referral to palliative care centers primarily by every doctor every nurse every physiotherapist every pharmacist every medical social worker every volunteer incorporating palliative care into whatever they do that means then in his wants this education has happened this integration of palliative care education is in the incorporate into the practice of every healthcare provider if i go for a with a running nose to my gp i hope he will notice the anxiety on my face and say ask you look very anxious it looks like just a common cold what is it could it be covid could be what i ask but without that prompting from that physician i may not have had the courage to ask or i may say look i have this very important uh, trustees meeting today i must attend it it's vitally important i am worried that with this cold i will not be able to attend and then instead of giving me cetirizine with its sedating property i hope my gp will prescribe me fexofenadin so that i will be alert during the meeting when i say integration of principles of palliative care into health care this is what i mean every surgeon every oncologist practices principles along with their routine care and of course that will not be enough there will be difficult problems where we will have to refer the person to a specialist palliative care unit but that's a smaller quantum of health related suffering that will get treated the bulk will be by integration of palliative care into health care the astana declaration of 2018 asked all member countries this is difficult to include the people in the community in designing and controlling health systems i hope ladies and gentlemen your college of palliative medicine will go go to the people engage the community make them part of the healthcare delivery system because they will know where the problems are most and particularly because healthcare has to integrate multiple sectors education agriculture transport commerce religion housing trade and health i am not saying this the astana declaration to which sri lanka and india are signatories announced this policy and how will we do it especially in governmental system where individual departments work as uh, isolated segments how will we ever achieve it my answer is include the people they will achieve it there is a young man whom we are treating among about we are treating about 110 people with paraplegia hey paraplegia is that something to be treated with uh, palliative care of course it is if it causes serious health related suffering may not be in new york may not be in london there they don't need palliative care for paraplegia you will find uh, the person in an intensive care this month next month you will find him in the supermarket making his own 
shopping, doing his own shopping on a wheelchair. In our country, our countries, this can be a serious problem, especially in outlying places like rural areas. So we rehabilitated him. He went back to his house, but there was no running water supply. And his mother had to climb down a hill and fetch running water. The local people got together, made sure that the local self-government organization acted and water supply reached his home. Now, is that part of healthcare? Of course it is. Without that, how could that young man be healthy? And finally, they say, protect everybody, especially the most vulnerable people. With the umbrella of healthcare promotion, disease prevention, and primary medical care. And universal health coverage has to include preventive, promotive, curative, palliative, and rehabilitative services. Now, this is to be, if this is to be achieved, especially for the vulnerable groups, the theme of this world, day before yesterday's World Hospice and Palliative Care Day was vitally important. The theme is to leave no one behind. I know things are a lot better in Sri Lanka now. In my country, a lot of people are left behind, even where we are providing palliative care. The vulnerable groups, who are they? The, those with disabilities, those subjected to gender discrimination, people who are politically isolated as those in prisons, those with different sexual orientation, or even women very often, especially in the rural areas. They are discriminated against. I hope one of the things that you will include in your college's curriculum will be how to leave no one behind. Who are left behind? What are the elements of suffering that those people have in their health? What those sufferings are and how best are they relieved? Western textbooks may not give us the solution suitable for our culture and our uh, economic and social background, we have to develop our own solutions. And let us make sure that we do not leave anyone behind. Now, uh, sorry. Is this integration possible? Will we have tomorrow, thanks to your College of Palliative Medicine, Will we have a system where not only is everybody getting pain relief, but palliative care has been integrated into healthcare as advised by World Health Assembly in 2014, where healthcare delivery systems like all palliative care centers include not only diagnosis and treatment of the disease, but symptom control, physical well-being, psychological, social, and spiritual support. Will that happen in all healthcare? When I say this, there are, I mean, very often from hospital administrators, uh, from management experts, and from public health uh, specialists, very often there is this look and if I force some people in the audience to verbalize what they feel, they say, this cannot be done. This is too difficult. And I will say, there are people doing it. There are people like you in palliative care actually making this happen. I will show the example of two hospitals, two cancer hospitals in India. One is in NASA. Silcher Catcher Cancer Center, the others in Darado. Uh, these two cancer hospitals are now pain free hospitals. I will not claim that all things that needed to be achieved have been done. But I know that every single patient coming into that hospital is asked, Do you have pain? 
If they say yes, it is scored. It is scored on a zero to ten scale, or if they cannot use the scale because of uh, inability to understand or because their cognition is impaired, at least an estimate is done about how severe it is. Every doctor and every nurse in two ca- these cancer hospitals has undergone a course in pain management. They all practice palliative care. They prescribe opioid medicines. Every doctor, the nurses keep the documentation. Does the nurses do the assessment and uh, do the follow up? This has been going on for three years. Okay, it's only pain relief. It's not the whole spectrum of palliative care, but they are getting there. They are progressing and making it happen. If there will be skepticism, there will be people who say that this cannot be done. This is too much. But, ladies and gentlemen, while congratulating you on starting your College of Palliative Medicine. I hope you will see, give serious thought about getting to the community, making the community your partner, about not limiting yourself to the strict confines of palliative medicine, only things that are given in the Oxford textbook of palliative care, but by thinking about health as a whole and getting whole healthcare system to be transformed by infusing compassion into it. That's a long road to go. It cannot be achieved in one year. You will have targets for this year and for five years by all means. But so long as we keep the eventual goal that what we will try to achieve is true healthcare for the people whom we are, we are to serve, then we will be really doing something worthwhile. I hope the work that you are all going to do give you a lot of satisfaction. I hope you will wipe a lot of tears and ease a lot of pains. Best wishes to you for the work that you have undertaken. Thank you very much for listening to me patiently and for putting up with my Malu accent, Malayalam accent, and also by Uh, being open and so warm, offering such warm friendship to our palliative care people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. You have taken us to a very different aspect, uh, new normal and palliative care. At the same time, you have highlighted very important uh, points, uh, importance of uh, doing a very structured program without doing any ad hoc program. At, at the same time, you have highlighted integration of palliative care. Uh, thank you very much, sir. On behalf of the Sri Lankan team, I would like to give very special appreciation for your speech. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Padma Gunaratna, the Honorable President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, to give an independent review about the second edition of Palliative Care Manual for the Healthcare Professional, written by the Palliative and End of Life Care Task Force Sri Lanka Medical Association. Over to you, Madam. All distinguished invitees, including Director, National Cancer Program, and the keynote speaker, Professor Immar Raj Gupal. Good morning to all of you. At the outset, let me tell you, the, it is a flagship activity and a task force that we have at the Sri Lanka Medical Association in, on palliative care, that is the uh, Palliative Care and End of Life Task Force. The Palliative Care and End of Life Task Force, established in 2016, has been contributing for the establishment of palliative care in Sri Lanka so much, enormously, and it was in only in 2017 that they published their very first edition on the palliative care for healthcare professionals. Uh, 
Now today what we are going to launch is the extension of the, that is the second edition, and it, at the initial attempt, it was palliative care, and uh, as the beginners, the, the document that they did, did not include the cancer care, but now uh, what uh, is being published and launched today is a comprehensive document and a publication uh, on palliative care manual for healthcare professionals in Sri Lanka. Uh, as uh, you would uh, 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 witness here when uh, the book is being uh, uh, launched, the, uh, the book is fairly, uh, uh, fairly uh, heavy volume and it includes almost every component that is required for a healthcare professional in palliative, palliative care. The, uh, if I could just take you through a little bit, for uh, one or two minutes, of the SLMS contribution, be through this, the Palliative Care Task Force. They have actually contributed for the National Steering Committee for Palliative Care here in Sri Lanka, as well as their contribution to Palliative Care Strategic tra Framework of the Ministry of Health also, be, along with the Cancer Control Program, also is uh, praiseworthy. And along with the Cancer Control Program, I know that in government hospitals, they have been able to establish palliative care teams. The, I am certain that this book would include, this would contribute to further improvement of palliative care in Sri Lanka. We are still as a speciality, it, has, it is not well established. I mean, I would say that about 80% of our patients or 90% maybe still may not be uh, receiving the adequate palliative care as it has become sort of a broader uh, uh, um, condition that include a broader range of uh, conditions uh, for the uh, care. So if I went through the book, I mean the, the comprehensive book, it has the initially they give the introduction on what is palliative care and then the core values, I mean it is the uh, patient to live as actively as possible during the course of an illness. Uh, it's a support system and also for the to give the support for family and then to affirm life and regards this as a normal process. And then it addresses the skills that is needed for a person, healthcare professional, providing palliative care. I uh, heard that the chairperson mentioning the need to have the uh, structured program. So even the skills such as the communication skills, team building in palliative care, and they move further forward and address the record keeping, the need to have proper record keeping for patients with palliative care. And then we know that the, we, in our all systems, there are conditions in our all systems that would require palliative care. So they go on addressing each and every system, gas the, gas the conditions with gastrointestinal system that would need palliative care and neurological, urinary, and so on. The conditions that very much familiar to me as a neurologist is that they address dementia and most, I mean, needed the entity, the motor neuron disease, uh, very uh, 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 comprehensively in this volume. Uh, and uh, I must congratulate this team uh, for providing this type of a volume uh, because it, uh, uh, I mean, this would be the best up to now that has been uh, published because uh, I know that the one that was published for the 2017 was the very first that was published on palliative care in Sri Lanka. So I'm sure that this would be a volume for all training neurologists, because being a neurologist, I would recommend that for all training neurologists to go through that dementia part and the motor neuron disease component of the uh, uh, book for the care of their patients. And it is written so in a readable way, and that uh, it, uh, that uh, has made any in the professional of any uh, level of care uh, could 
make use of it in, in their day-to-day -day practice. And also it emphasizes the need to integrate, pal need to integrate palliative care for our day-to-day -day care system so that it, 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 it makes it clear that the teaching on palliative care has to be commenced at the medical student days and it has to be there for all doctors as well as the, when it comes to the uh, uh, um, specialist trainees as well as to the consultants. And it goes on addressing the special patient categories for elderly and the uh, pediatrics and then end of life care. The most interesting part that uh, for me as a clinician, I mean, I initially was with interest with stroke and then uh, move on to geriatrics and now I'm addressing on palliative care. So as a person with interest in this thing, I, I mean, we Sri Lankans, we all the time are supposed to, I mean, we are 70% of our population is supposed to be Buddhist. We are supposed to be uh, thinking all the time of the uncertainty of life and the certainty of death. But then I see that many of our patients, when we try to discuss C patients, we see that, I mean, that has not been, that is not there with any of those lives. And it, the death has become so difficult topic for us to discuss. So uh, it highlights the need for to initiate a conversation on the death. I mean, the death has to be a topic that is being discussed among our, uh, with our patients and in, in the community so that it, when it comes to the need of palliative care, it becomes convenient for all the clinicians to address the uh, uh, topic with the patients. So the, uh, let me uh, 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 conclude. Uh, it, it further discuss on grief, bereavement, and finally ends up with uh, the approach to effective management integrated, the need to uh, integrated targeted and tailored care for patients. I mean, you, you could imagine that it goes on for the uh, discussion on the uh, process of inquest as well as correspondence with Grama Niladari. So, uh, uh, so the, uh, the level of care, I mean, the professionals in any level of care could make use of this volume for their day-to-day -day, uh, practice. So uh, 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 let me uh, congratulate all the, the task force, as well as all authors who tirelessly contributed for this valuable uh, document. And I'm certain that this book is going to make a change in the, uh, uh, among the professionals of their the attitude, because we as medical professionals all the time are looking for the cure or the improvement, but this would change this need to the mindset of these clinicians, how to be changed when providing services in palliative care so that uh, uh, this would be the initiation and the, uh, uh, it would cause a long-lasting impact among the clinicians on this topic on palliative care. So let me thank all of the organizers for giving us the Sri Lanka Medical Association, giving us this opportunity to launch this book on the palliative care manual for healthcare professionals in Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka on this date, World Hospice and Palliative Care Day 2021, under the theme, Leave No One Behind, Equiting Access to Palliative Care. Thank you very much for your patient attention. Thank you very much, Madam. Now, it's the time to the launch of the book. Uh, for that, I would like to call upon on stage Dr. Umbeangani Ramadasa, the consultant physician and senior lecturer, the head of the Department of Medicine of the Sabaragamu University, and the convener of the Palliative and End of Life Care Task Force SLMA, and to Dr. Dilhara Samaravirya, the chairperson of the Task Force uh, uh, End of Life Care Task Force uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association, uh, to hand over the book to our director, National Cancer Control Program, Dr. Janaki Vidana Patirana, Madam.
thank you very much to you all. Uh, actually, we develop policies, guidelines, and capacities, uh, capacity building and health promotion with awareness. But the most important part of the part of this is the end user of the palliative care services. Now we have come to one of the most important event of today's session, that is to share the experience of the purview of hospices by the voice of uh, Venerable Dr. Kusuma, which will be delivered by the businesses Nisansala Karunaratna, and she will be joining virtually. So over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm honored to review a book written by Venerable Dr. Bhikkhuni Kusuma while she was residing at the Institute of Palliative Medicine for eight months. So, uh, Venerable Dr. Bhikkhuni Kusuma is a fully ordained Sri Lankan Buddhist nun who has pioneered the re-establishment of the Theravada female Buddhist order in Sri Lanka, a country that has spread the wisdom of the Buddha all over the world for many centuries. She started life as a science teacher and in 1969 won two scholarships offered by National Science Foundation and Asia Foundation from USA and studied molecular biology at Wall State University in Indiana. Later, she joined the Sri Lanka Sri Jayavadanapura University. At 69 years, she became the first bhikkhuni in Sri Lanka after a lapse of 1,000 years. She established Ayakema International Buddhist Meditation Center. She is an author of more than 20 books in both Sinhala and English. She is very well recognized nationally and internationally, and she is well-known Dharma preacher. She had delivered more than 3,000 Dhamma sermons around the world. Venerable Dr. Bhikkhuni Kusuma came to the Institute of Palliative Medicine towards the end of December in 2018. So I quote from her book. On 6 December, my blood pressure was uncontrolled and high, and there is a host of ailments constipation, vertigo, pain in the knee, severe osteoarthritis, gastritis, you name it, it is there. They said I was getting a VIP room and nurses and staff, medical facilities, doctors making routine checks. It is a four-story building and many rooms for palliative patients, unquoted. So that was her condition when she came to the hospice. Here's her first impression and the experience about the place. Quoted, it was amazing. Everything was so new, so beautiful. We had a walk around and they led me to the VIP room. Is this all for me? It was no one room, maybe three room in one. The light blue ceiling and white walls and many windows. Three fans and AZ. I said, I don't want AZ. I'm too old. The place was well equipped, beds, she, uh, a settee, carpets, attached toilet, screens. Everywhere you look was so lovely. The colors are so soothing, relaxing. A table and four chairs to dine. I, was, I said I was not used to such luxury. Like living in a five-star hotel. Everywhere it was bright and glooming, spotless. The tiled floor is swept and mopped twice a day. There is a daily hair. On the 7th, 7th December, at 10 in the morning, she wrote, they brought a fruit drink. Do, do you want? Yes, it is free. And why not to have it? I was so surprised. It was nice and cool. What is it? Nice pink color. It was watermelon mixed with banana and etc. All the patients are served and I get a share. Uncorded. So that was the outstanding service at the hospice from her words. I caught, I did ward rounds and one patient was crying, Kurupu Arachi, thinking she's going to die. I said, how good you can go to heaven and have a better life and taught her Metta Bhavana. She was so thin, only skin and bone. She showed her hand and said she fell and fractured the arm. How did you fall? 
At Karapitla Hospital, I had to share the bed with another patient and fell off the bed. It was such a tragedy and a comedy. I nearly laughed. How bad of me. This is, some, this is nothing unusual in Sri Lanka today. Hospital beds are so narrow and high and she is a cancer patient. At 89 years, I can have a fall and break the limbs and it won't be a job for me. She came here a few days ago and was quite feeble, unable to walk and was taken by wheelchair. Now I see her walking. Isn't that a miracle? Unquoted. This evoked the tremendous care of the nursing staff at the hospice care. Further, she says, on the 10th of December, today a patient came. She is paralyzed on one side and can't walk. Arthritis. She accidentally tripped over and the nail came out. Madhushani is dressing the wound. Very professional. Gloves and all the accessories. Everybody is thankfully in bed and resting, having nothing to do. That includes me as well, but it is my meditation time too. At 4.30 p.m., I was escorted by Navodhya and Sujata to the dentist. The visiting doctor informed Dr. Samadhi. Seated on the reclining dental chair, I remember all those who cared for me. The whole of last night, I slept after the extraction. It was paining and I did Vedana Anupasana, feeling contemplation. Two, three times I woke up. It was painful again and again. I meditated and relaxed and slept. In the morning, the pain was gone. So I did not take painkillers, only the antibiotic. I'm so thankful to the entire staff. Ice water, roasted rice kanji, medicine for gastritis and antacid. And, 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 I'm happy to be here. On the 10th of January, 2019, I came here today after a long, comfortable journey from Colombo. Agra, wife of Dr. Senaka Velandava, was so kind to bring me. As usual, it was joyful experience to be back, like coming home to all familiar smiling faces. Navodhya and Madhushani, the two young nursing nurses, took charge of the baggage and distributed gifts for everybody. There were crackers and goodies from my daughter and it was a party as well, uncoated. This indicates the warmth of hospice staff as well as how much they touched her heart. And again, she says on the same day, quote, I'm most fortunate to say in this Clean place, beautiful new VVIP apartment. I must have done good merit to get this all free in my old age at 89. I feel so satisfied, happy and grateful. No end. The curtains are lovely, unquoted. This, clear, this is clear evidence for the cleanliness of the hospice. I caught again, 11 January. Dr. Nana Akara, the visiting doctor, tested my pressure and it was very good and said to omit Nicardia and take only Losartan. So morning and night, the nurses test my pressure two, three times and found it to be normal. My gastritis is almost gone and I have normal bowel movements. Dr. and Mrs. Valandava and another lady doctor came at about 7 p.m. and we had a very successful Dhamma discussion. On the 12th January, there was a dana and I invited them to share merit. They were in a hurry. I just said 10 minutes. I spoke to them about Yoniso Manasikara and purifying the mind at the end. None of them got up to go. We don't want to go, they said. It was a great day for me. I sat in meditation for two hours after about five months. 20th of January. I feel quite well without any physical ailment after about five to six months. Unfortunately, this shows she was physically and mentally in a very comfortable stage. I caught 25th January. Yesterday was a busy day for me. Two nuns, one is the chief of Southeast Asia, a Taiwanese nun and a Sri Lankan nun. 
They had lunch on the way and stayed here for nearly three hours until an American nun, Venerable Tata Loka, came with three others. She is the chief nun in USA. I'm honored by her visit and they were very impressed by the beauty and facilities given to me and to the other patients all for free, unquoted. So even the Americans were surprised to see the quality service of this hospice. On the 26th of January, she expressed her joy once again like this, I caught. When I came here on the 10th of January, I was quite sick and couldn't, could hardly walk. And now I can go up and down the stairs and my blood pressure is under control. The gastritis is almost over and the bowel movements is almost normal. I have no complaints and I'm really enjoying my retirement after a long up here journey till 89 years. This is really a palliative institution. The rest and relaxation is very conductive to reduce the physical ailments. The mind was not sick, but the body was sick and thought that I had to endure. No, I'm still batting sixes and fours and not out. No runs because I can't, I can hardly walk. My grateful thanks to Dr. Samadhi and Nisansala and all the others for all the kindness. They are spoiling me. They even make my bed and hand over the medicine and food is on the table right on time. I woke up at seven today and saw the food already on the table. Have I done such merit to deserve all this? Is it only a beautiful dream? On the 29th of January. The patients are mostly having cancer and they come for about three weeks after care having taken cancer therapy in the hospital. They are given after care and much needed rest and after a few days they recover and are able to walk about and tend to their personal needs. Then they go home and return after the next cancer therapy in the hospital. This institute function as a transit home too. On the 4th of February, I thought, this is, this is a charitable organization. The old and the sick that cannot be looked after come for medical treatment as well as rest and relaxation. If someone here is looking for money and status, they will be greatly disappointed. The whole place runs on divine abodes, loving kindness, compassion, altruistic joy, and equanimity. I have seen such spirituality in meditation centers and forest monasteries, but they do not give medical treatment like this. I wonder whether there are any such places as this in the world. There may be old, old age homes, but they do not have the luxury of a separate room with AC and fans and detached bathroom and medical care all for free. In Sri Lanka, we find children's home and orphanages that run on charity, but they do not have the facilities and medical attention. I must congratulate Dr. Samadhi and Nisansala and staff for conceiving of such an idea and erecting this four-story building and equipping it with all the facilities. On on the 1st of March, 2019, Dr. Nanayakara tested my, tested my blood pressure. It was normal. So I said, you can discharge me. No, I'm charged for a life sentence. I'm so happy. Who will want to keep me an 89 year old for life? This is all loving kindness in action. On the 13th of March, loving kindness meditation above, below and across in the entire universe. May all living beings be well and happy, free from pain and suffering, free from anger and hatred, from enmity. When we wish well for others, we become well and happy, free from pain and suffering. The past will never come back. The future is doubtful. Let go the dead past and the unborn future. Live in the present in mindfulness, vipassana, unquoted. I believe one has to be in a good physical and mental state to come up with such wonderful thoughts. And then on the 15th of March, she wrote like this, I quote, 
It is still a dream. I'm ever grateful to Dr. Samadhi Nisansala and their dedicated team for having this Institute of Palliative Medicine for the needy patients in the country, unquoted. This is her own words about her experience on physical, mental, social, and spiritual care she got at this hospice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Enduso Vive is the most important part of delivering palliative care services. We have heard about it from the perspective of Venerable Dr. Kuzuma. And uh, thank you very much, Ms. Nisansara Karunaratna, for delivering this speech. Now, according to the agenda, it's the time for a five minute stay break. Please uh, join with us with, after five minutes. According to the agenda, our next item is to share the experiences of hospital palliative care consult services. For that, first I would like to share the presentations prepared by the Apeksha Hospital Maharagama. We have a dedicated palliative care team comprising Palliative Care Master Training Consultant, Palliative Medicine Diploma Doctors, Palliative Care Master Training Nursing Officers, Social Services Officer and Supportive Care. Our multidisciplinary team consists of Consultant Oncologist and Team, Consultant Psychiatrist with Counseling and Empowerment Team, Consultant Anesthetic with Pain Management Unit, Consultant Oncosurgeon with Wound Care and Stomach Care, Medical Nutrition Team, pharmacist and physiotherapist. Inward care support received from relevant oncology board and staff. Emergency treatment unit help us in carrying out invasive daytime procedures without admitting the patient to the ward. Shanta Seven Hospice team are accepting and taking care of palliative patients who does not have satisfactory home care background and patient with patients with end of life and terminal stage. Support given by oncologists and public health nursing officers at oncology unit in peripheral hospitals. General practitioners for following up and facilitate care for terminally ill patients. Support and guidance given by hospital administration in CCP and MOH. Also, we have well-wishers, donors, and volunteers. The services provided by the Palliative Care Unit NCIM. Inpatient consultation service and formulate individual care plan. Patients refer to the Palliative Care Unit by a collaborative approach, working together with the treating consultant, oncologist, and the team. We have Outpatient service 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily and palliative care clinic once a week. This is to provide continuous, compassionate and expert care within ethical framework. We facilitate terminal discharges, arrangement of shared care with home-based palliative care through PHNOs at provincial level. Awareness programs for the hospital staff and caregiver training. Academic cooperation with universities and training undergraduate, undergraduate medical students and postgraduate doctors. Palliative care training for nursing officers and other health staff. We also conduct palliative care researchers and audit. These are the challenges that we are facing. Increasing human resources, recruiting designated medical officers with diploma in palliative care. Improvement of infrastructure, arranging separate clinic space, space to carry out clinical procedures, family discussion rooms, training equipments and multimedia, telephone facilities to continue hotline service, drug and other consumables, and also the prevailing pandemic situation. Statistic of palliative care unit from 2015 to 2021. We started our service in 2015. 15 August providing care for 100 patients. This is a graphical representation of monthly data from 2015 to show the gradual expansion of our unit. In 2020, we were able to provide our service to 4,859 patients. 
and in 2021 till August, despite of this pandemic situation, we were able to carry out our care for 3,364 patients. Thank you very much for the team of the Apeksha Hospital Mahargama. The next item uh, is to share the experiences and the services provided by the teaching hospital Karapitya Gaul Palliative Care Consultant Services. Satsit Satkam PSL is the Sri Lanka's first hospital-based palliative care center which provides 30 facilitated housings to patients with palliative care needs. First, the palliative care clinic was established in October 2018. Then the palliative care team noticed the necessity of a palliative care center. Consultant oncological surgeon Dr. Krishanta Pereira is the pioneer of the palliative care center who assembles Sri Lanka Cancer Society Goal Branch or the donors, the Sri Lanka Navy, to achieve this great goal. Our goal is to provide relief for physical, emotional and spiritual suffering of our patients and their loved ones. Our mission is to provide the highest quality, individualized and compassionate care that enrich the life of patients and their beloved by programming and resolving the challenges they face. To fulfill our comfort care, there is an interdisciplinary team which consists with consultants, oncology doctors, nurses, counsellors, physiotherapists, nutritionists, social workers, pain management team, wound care team, spiritual care team, volunteers and societies. Since opening, we have provided service to 255 inpatients and more than 356 patients in clinic. Among those, 141 patients were discharged with the knowledge of maintaining their quality of life. We provided our assistance to 114 patients to have a good, pain-free, peaceful death. The services we are providing, the pain management, wound care, stoma care, psychological therapies, spiritual care, social and financial support, end-of-life care and bereavement care. Pain is the most challenging issue in the palliative care, proving that 94.1% of patients have received pain relief. We are happy to say that people love the homely atmospheres and they always appreciate our loving care. In providing palliative care services, our main challenging issue is the unawareness of palliative care in medical community, administrators, politicians, also in general public. In our country, Sri Lanka is new to palliative care. There are few evidence in palliative care needs and services. But we have a separated luxury style premises with an outstanding leadership. Sri Lanka Cancer Society, volunteers, social workers, donors are the strength of our success. Last but not least, our welcoming staff is the root of our compassionate care. Thank you very much, the team of uh, Palliative Care Consultant Services of the Teaching Hospital Karapitya for your nice uh, presentation. Next, I would like to invite the District General Hospital, New Aurelia, uh, Palliative Care Consultant Services to share their experience and the services. Good morning. As the oncology unit of District General Hospital, New Aurelia, we conduct new and follow-up patient clinic chemotherapy clinic and inward facilities for oncology and palliative care patients. Recently, we were able to open our newly built oncology ward complex. There, we have a separate section for palliative care and end-of-life patients. As you all know, most of the people in New Orleans district face several difficulties in their lives. Financial difficulties, social issues, low education level and transportation difficulties are few of them. Because of these issues, patients come for medical advice in the end stage of their disease. 
Therefore, palliative care services plays a very vital role in in oncology patient management. If we discuss the objectives of our unit, we need to improve and expand palliative care services because when the number of patients increase, it is very difficult to give services with the existing facilities. Also, we think there should be a hospice in this region because when there is an end-stage patient at home, it would be additional for the family members as well as they can't give proper care for that patient. We need to enhance the education level of the general public regarding early detection of cancer and the available facilities and options for palliative care. Also, we need to get the support from the community and community groups in the region such as volunteer clubs, business societies and religious leaders. If we discuss about the working experiences, we are happy to say we have a very well dedicated palliative care home based team. It includes medical officers, well dedicated nursing officers, physiotherapists, pharmacists and counsellors. They go uh, very remote areas to find the, patient, the houses of patients and give them comfort and relieve their pains and symptoms. As I mentioned previously, uh, we get a lot of support from above mentioned community groups. With the new ward complex, we can give one to one support for the end stage patients. However, when we are working, in regions like Nuarelia, we have fa- we have we have faced challenges like financial difficulties, low medical literacy of the general public, and transportation difficulties and less manpower. But we get a lot of donations, and we are thankful to our hospital administration for giving the support and transport facilities to improve palliative care services and palliative care home based team. Finally, I would say we are planning to improve facilities and services for oncology patients in New Orleans district. Thank you. Thank you very much for the team of palliative care consultant services district general hospital New Orleans. Now, I would like to invite the District General Hospital Monragala Palliative Care Consultant Services to share their experiences and the services provided for these patients. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Mihiri Jayasurya, representing Oncology Unit of District General Hospital Monragala for World Hospice and Palliative Care Day 2021 to share some experiences with you all. So, Palliative Care is an approach to improve quality of life of patients and their family members who are facing the problems associated with life-threatening illness through the prevention and relief of suffering by early identification, assessment and treatment of pain and other problems, physical, psychosocial and spiritual, according to World Health Organization. Here, our objectives to provide symptomatic care for those with advanced malignancy as an example pain management, to address psychosocial issues of both patient and their family members, to improve quality of life of patients. There are some pictures of services provided by us. We have arranged home visits for patients with advanced malignancy who are facing a lot of difficulties. You can see how bad their situation is in disease wise and socio-economically. As a team including consultant oncologist, medical officers, nursing officers, supportive staff, we visit them and arrange necessary treatments after assessing them. As example, IV fluids after cannulation, catheterization, wound dressing, collection of samples, as you can see in these photographs. We get a lot of satisfaction by doing these things and patient and their family members are happy and satisfied. Due to current COVID pandemic situation, 
there are lot of restrictions but we hope to continue as much as possible challenges and strengths we have arranged a designated place for palliative care patients in madagama district hospital but it has been taken for management of covid patients currently but we hope to provide palliative care in this center in near future we have an ambulance for palliative care patients it is used for home visits as well so it is very useful we have very enthusiastic public health nursing officers who visit patients and take necessary actions with our opinion so they play an important role challenges wise sometimes there is lack of medicines as example morphine which is an important drug in palliative care but somehow we managed to provide better care with available drugs sometimes we search for financial assistance donations for patients and their family members sometimes we see there are patients who are breadwinner of family and they have small children as well so they are very financially unstable and we try to provide financial support for them it is a challenge even though there are a lot of challenges we gain a lot of satisfaction through better patient care so let's improve quality of life of our patient with palliative care thank you we hope you got something from us Thank you very much for the team of uh, District General Hospital Monragala Palliative Care Consult Services. Now it's time to share the experiences of community-based palliative care services provided by the public health nursing officers at the community level. First, I would like to invite the uh, public health nursing officer of uh, PMCU Koraravella to share their experiences and the services. Good morning, all of you. I am Shamila Priyankani Fernando, Public Health Nursing Officer, work at PMCU Koralavella, Colombo District. As a Public Health Nursing Officer, we are giving palliative care, especially home-based care, since 2019. Today, I hope to share in my experiences regarding palliative care service in my MOIC area. aims and objectives aims for the palliative care prevention early detection comprehensive and management of physical psychosocial and spiritual issues and needs my objectives are maintain grassroots palliative care service as a care provider as a care coordinator and giving help spiritual care as a care provider i am giving terminally ill patient care end of life care and doing caregiver training as a care coordinator care coordination within patient and hospital patient and social services patient family and community patient and caregiver helping spir- spiritual care help for the religious activities meditation therapy supportive care and bereavement care these are the some pictures of my service physiotherapy for the patient with cerebrovascular accident then improve personal hygiene for the very massive obese and bed bound patient and counseling the patient regarding 
regular taking oral medication other one end of life care giving patient with breast cancer sharing sympathy with patient family last one wound dressing changing patient with breast cancer these are the some pictures in covid situation end of life care giving patient with chronic renal failure bed so management at the disabled home bereavement care normal saline infusion given post quarantine covid positive patient insertion of nasogastric tube for the patient with cerebrovascular accident changing position of the patient by helping the religious members last one is counseling the patient strength and challenges we have to face more challenges and we have more strength strength are knowledge skills palliative care center of apeksha hospital our moic staff and moic my workout team and my community person challenges are we haven't palliative care team and lack of shared care plan lack of awareness health team regarding palliative care lack of transport services lack of equipments lack of proper documentation and no proper link for the palliative care service thank you very much thank you very much mrs shamila the public health nursing officer of uh, pm koralavella now i would like to invite uh, the pmcu karya maditha public health nursing officer to share their experience and the services world hospice and palliative care day 2021 mama mahajana saukya hedena nidarni lgmn edrisingha pradeshi rohala karya maditha අපේ රෝහල පිහිටලා තියෙන හම්බන්තොට දිස්ත්‍රික්කයේ අපේ රෝහලට ග්‍රාම ග්‍රාම සේකවසම් 18ක් අයිති වෙනවා එම ග්‍රාම සේකවසම් 18 තමයි මහා ජන සෞඛ්‍ය හෙද නිලධාරිනිගේ ඒරියා එක මේකේ ජනතාව ඉන්නවා පාලස් 1864 ක් මෙම ග්‍රාම සේකවසම් 18ේ රෝගීන් තමයි මහා ජන සෞඛ්‍ය හෙද නිලධාරිනි විසින් රැක බලා ගැනීමට තියෙන්නේ මේ රෝහලේ ආයතනික වශයෙන් තියෙන අරමුණු ටික තමයි අපි මෙහි සඳහන් කරලා තියෙන්නේ මෙහි පළවෙනි රූපයෙන් දැක්වෙන්නේ ගුද මාර්ගීය පිළිකා ආශ්‍රිතව ඉන්න රෝගීන් කොටසක් මෙහි රෝ ඉන්නවා රෝගීන් 6 දෙනෙක් පමණ මෙහි 3 දෙනෙක් කොලෙස්ටරෝමි බෑග් සමග ඉන්නවා අනිත් අය කොලෙස්ටරෝමි බෑග් තිබිලා දැනට අයින් කරපු අය ඉන්නවා ඒ වගේම මෙතනින් 3 දෙනෙක් ජීවිතක්ෂයට පත් වෙලා තියෙනවා අනිත් මේ ෆැමිලි එකේ ඉන්න අනිත් අය අවදානම් තත්ත්වය පසු වෙනවා. ඒතර ඒගොල්ලෝ අපි අපේ බෝන ඕන රෝග සායනයට ගෙනල්ල ඒගොල්ලන් අවශ්‍ය යොමු කිරීම වලට අපි යොමු කරලා තියෙනවා. ඊටස්සේ මේ දෙවෙනි පින්තූරෙන් දැක්වෙන්නේ අපේ රෝහලේ තිබෙනවා සහන සත්කාර සේවය කියලා. එහෙදි අපේ රෝහලේ කණ්ඩායමක්ම අපි යනවා අපේ පැලියටිව් කියලා පේෂන්ලා බලන්න. එහෙදි මේ නර්ස් කෙනෙක්, මයින් ස්ටාෆ් එක කෙනෙක් ඒක වෛද්‍යවරයා ඇතුළු පිරිසක් මේ රෝගියෙක් බැලීමට ගියපු අවස්ථාවක්. ඊළඟට තියෙන්නේ අපි කොලෙස්ටරෝමියක් සහිත සීය රෙක්ටම් පේෂන් කෙනෙක් එයාට හර්නියා එකක් කරලා මේ ඒක තමයි මේ රූප දෙකෙන්ම දැක්වෙන්නේ ඒකට අපි ඩ්‍රෙසින් කරන්න ගියපු අවස්ථාවක් මේ අනිත් රූපයෙන් දැක්වෙන්නේ සේලයින් එකක් දෙන්න ගියපු අවස්ථාවක් ඒකේ උගුරේ පිළිකා තත්ත්වයක් තමයි තිබුණේ 
ඉතින් මේ වගේ රෝගීන් රෝහලට ගෙන එන එක ලොකු අපහසුවක්. ඉතින් ඒ අපිට අපේ රෝහලට මේගොල්ලෝ දැනුවත් කරාට පස්සේ රෝ මේ රෝහල විසින් මාව දැනුවත් කරලා මම එම රෝගීන් බැලීමට අවුන්ට අවශ්‍ය සත්කාරය සිදු කිරීමට යනවා. ඇත්තටම මේ මේකෙද තියෙන අපිට ගැටලුව තමයි අපිට රිපරල් සිස්ටම් එකක් නැහැ. රෝගීන්ම තමයි අපිට රෝහලට මේ සම්බන්ධයෙන් දැනුවත් කරලා යන්නේ. එහෙම නැතුව අපිට යොමු කිරීමක් නැහැ. मेम रूप रामेन्टिव पेशेंट गिहिलेवा අපි සෞඛ්‍ය පුරුදු අනුගමනය කරමින් ඔවුන්ගේ නිවෙස් වලට ගිහිල්ලා ඒ කියන්නේ අපේ රෝගීන්ටත් හානියක් නොවෙන්න අපි ඔහුට අවශ්‍ය හෙද සේවාව ලබා දෙනවා එවැනි අවස්ථා කිහිපයක් තමයි මේ රූප රාමු වලින් දක්වලා තිබෙන්නේ එතකොට අපි විශේෂයෙන්ම අපේ ප්‍රදේශයේ ඉන්න පැලියටිව් කෙයා රෝගීන් මිය ගිහාම අපිට රෝගීන්ගේ उदाहरण एट्रस ओंटतीन कोलस्टमी बैग ए वगे ओंट लंग तीन देवा पउल विसिंग अट अल अट बार दिन वेतकोट ऊन के बलापुर वगे विनाथ्रोगी एट ए देवा लबा नुहक रोग एम देवा लबा दिन इतना मेरू प्रावेन्नी मे कोलस्टमी बैग तीन रोगी एक मेतन मे आवृद्ध गणनावक्तिसे कोलस्ट्रम बैग तेक्तम जीवत्ने सी ए रेक्ट पेशेंट के निक्तम मेतन इन्नी इतकोट मेतन मम्मी मे आट दीलती इन्नी अभी परत्याग कर कोलस्ट्रम बैग मुकद मे सी ए तनिय गिदर इन्नी मे आट क्लीनिकेटे अन्न बेह मुकद तनियम कोहमत्यान्न बेह करापीटी तम गिये थिंक ये आट मे बैग लागा विद्यालय इतर मट की ऐ थिंक एवलावे मंगल परीत्याग कर लोलस्टमी बैग मम्मी सी अट लादेलतीवागे मे को बेलावे अपे पैलियेटिव के पेशेंट रोहल टेबिल वैक्सीन गंड बेरी अवस्था तिबुना इतर एवलावे अपे रोहले सहन सत्कार सेवे मगिन एमो इच्छेला अपे पैलियेटिव पेशेंट निवस मगि वैक्सीन निकलाबागनी मैं खाटी तो अपे रोहल मगिन सिद्ध करा यही दिया पे आयतन बारा वाइदी निदारी तो माँ केदर निदारी ने तेरु एम्मो ऐच्छिक ऐतरु सिरु कार्य मानले मैं देवाल वाला टापी टे सहायोगे लाबा दुन्ना ऐतरु में अपे रोहल अपे अपे पैलिएटिव किया पेशेंट लवेनुएन एको लोट सेवे लाबा दी मट � पैलियेटिव के रोगी सत्कार अपन अभियोग सोशल सपोर्ट अभी रोगी आट लपोर्ट इतना चलेंज इलाट पवर्टी पवर्टी दुपत्त काम अभियोग Thank you very much, Mrs. Sadhir Singh, from District Hospital, Karya Madhita. Now, our next item is to share the video presentation prepared by the Teaching Hospital, Karapitiya Palliative Care Centre, to show and share their experience and services provided for the palliative care patients. Palliative Care Centre in Teaching Hospital, Karapati. This is the 
vaccines where we provide palliative care to patients coming all over the country. As we all know, palliative care is provided to terminal ill patients with uncurable diseases, either due to cancer or non-cancer etiology. Lack of a well-established palliative care centre in Sri Lankan healthcare sector was a major issue over the past few decades due to the increasing incidence of cancer and other incurable non-cancer illnesses. So, uh, palliative care centre at Teaching Hospital Karapetia was established to fill these laps according to a concept of senior consultant on surgeon Dr. Crisanta Pereira in March 2020. Under his guidance, palliative care team provides comfort and care to terminal ill patients coming from all over the country. The unit comprises of two dormitories with 20 bed capacity and 10 ensuite bedrooms allowing a total of 30 patients to receive inward care at a single time. Each room consists of an attached bathroom, television, radio, water and air conditioner as well. It is surrounded by a calm and quiet environment and is a shelter to many pets which helps to improve the peace of mind in patients. We provide a multidisciplinary team care which includes doctors, nurses, psychologists, counsellors, social workers, physiotherapists and spiritual workers. Pain management, wound care, stoma care, psychological care and nutritional support are few of the many things that we do. We provide comfort to the patient by managing their pain and other symptoms. We also look into the social issues of the patient as well as their family members. We perform music therapy, art therapy, neurolinguistic programming therapy and pet therapy sessions as well. We have a fully equipped, dedicated kitchen to prepare the meals needed to both the patient and the family members. And our nursing officers has taken an extra step forward to provide the meals according to their patient's preference. Altogether, our aim is to improve the quality of life of the patient and the family members and in the end to provide comfortable and a dignified death. Up to present, we have cared for a total of 342 patients in ward. Our palliative care clinic functions to care for the outpatient palliative patients. Palliative Care Clinic is an open access clinic where patients can come even without a referral. Clinics open on every Saturday from 8 to 12 noon at OPD in Oncology Unit, Teaching Hospital Karapitiya. Thank you very much for the team of uh, Palliative Care Center of TH, uh, Teaching Hospital Karapitiya for your beautiful presentation. Now it's time to share the experience and the services provided from the hospices. First, I would like to invite the Palliative Care Association, Sahana Savana Hospice in Maharagama to share the experiences and the services well, provided. Thank you. I, on behalf of Palliative Care Association of Sri Lanka, thank the organization, organizers of National Cancer Control Program for organizing this symposium and giving us an opportunity to make this presentation. The Palliative Care Association of Sri Lanka, the national umbrella organization, was launched in April 1975 
with the guidance and auspices of the College of General Practitioners of Sri Lanka. With the primary objective of the promotion and provision of affordable, accessible, and quality palliative care for the public of Sri Lanka. The objective of the Palliative Care Association of Sri Lanka strongly resonates with the 2021 theme of the World Hospice and Palliative Care Day of 2021, Leave No One Behind Equity in Access to Palliative Care. The objectives of the Palliative Care Association of Sri Lanka are to promote the development and advancement of palliative care on par with international standards, to promote affordable, accessible, and appropriate quality care for patients facing a life-limiting or prolonged disabling illness and facilities for their carers, to promote a forum for those who have an interest in the field of palliative care, to provide education and information regarding palliative care for patients, professionals, health planners, policymakers, volunteers, and care carers, to build sustainable network throughout the country to provide holistic care for patients, irrespective of diagnosis, socioeconomic status, or religious background. To address the ethical problems associated with the care of terminally ill patients. To promote, establish, and support any institution, scientific establishment, research organization, which is directed towards raising the standards of practice, training, or research of palliative care in Sri Lanka. To use all efforts to establish and liaise with other associations and scientific bodies in Sri Lanka and abroad with similar objectives. To carry out other activities which are incidental or conducive to the furtherance of the objectives of the association. The Association of Sri Lanka has traversed a well-planned and steady path in achieving these objectives in Sri Lanka by initially engaging in spreading awareness on the need of palliative care in Sri Lanka and building on the knowledge and skills of the potential stakeholders. To this end, Palliative Care Association of Sri Lanka, in collaboration with the Institute of Palliative Medicine of India in Kerala, a WHO collaborating center for community participation in palliative care and long-term care have trained nearly 500 doctors in all specialties and 80 nurses in government and private sector. By conducting two-day certificate courses in palliative care, these were held in Colombo, Gaul, Jaffna, Kandy, Anuradhapura, and Batiklo. The Palliative Care Workbook for Caregivers, published by the Institute of Palliative Medicine, Kerala, India, was translated and published in Singhala and Tamil and made available free as a training tool for caregivers in Sri Lanka. Successfully commemorated World Palliative Care Day since 2016, where souvenirs with articles from experts in the field were printed to build awareness of this fast developing but relatively new field of medicine. Three orations have been held so far in subjects related to palliative. Palliative Association of Sri Lanka organized and conducted the post Congress on Palliative Care at the 129th annual session of the Sri Lanka Medical Association and parallel sessions on Palliative Care at the annual sessions of the College of Surgeons. At the national policy level, Palliative Association of Sri Lanka's proposal on palliative care has been included in the National Health Strategic Master Plan 2016-2025 of the Ministry of Health Sri Lanka. The Palliative Care Association of Sri Lanka also submitted a palliative care policy of Sri Lanka draft to the then Director General of Health Services, and he promptly appointed a National Steering Committee on Palliative Care under his chair and the outcome was the National Strategic Framework for Palliative Care Development in Sri Lanka 2019-2023.
Health Care Association of Sri Lanka also campaigned for renewal of regulations for prescriptions of opioids so that all appropriate trained doctors have access to oral morphine, enabling pain relief to be incorporated in the primary health care system. This requires that in the future, morphine formulations be available widely. Community projects. <clears throat> Nutritional supplement project currently in progress, we are about 450 teens to the tune of roughly rupees 1 million have been as distributed for the benefit of poor patients on palliative care needing nutritional supplements. These patients are from Martha Paul on Radhapura Apeksha Hospital and Provisorial Surgical Ward at Kalambu South Teaching Hospital. Kamen Sahanasevan Hospice in Maharagama, which serves as a transit center for five patients who seek medical treatment from Apeksha Hospital. The hospice concept has been gradually introduced with the nursing staff who are undergoing training to deal with patients. A well-known home for the age situated in Matakulia, housing the elderly who are abandoned without care by society, is being assisted by way of a shared care approach. A doctor visits the center from time to time to help the organization to treat the medical related problems of the inmates. All services provided by the Palliative Care Association of Sri Lanka is of complementary nature to the free health care offered by the state. Palliative Care Association of Sri Lanka joins hands with other stakeholders and coordinates the activities at the community level in looking after such patients which would help to reduce the state hospital beds being occupied by such patients. This young organization has world recognition by successfully gaining membership with the world-renowned centers well-known for palliative care related activities, namely World Hospice Palliative Care Alliance UK, International Association for Hospice and Palliative Care USA, Asia Pacific Hospice Palliative Care Network Singapore. PCSL, PCSL will strive to work closely with the state sector health institutions and all other like-minded stakeholders, both nationally and internationally, in achieving World Hospice and Palliative Care Day 2021 team, leave no one behind equity in access to palliative care. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Matthew. Now I would like to invite the Cancer Care Association and Palliative Care Trust Hospice in Anuradhapura and Mathura uh, to share their experiences and services provided for the palliative care patients. Jasaan Sangge memerhati itu perikaya itu guru asalnya macam rogi itu visal satkar serva kipiak makar gini ya. Ini perdana dana ganda itu memang home base pelatih juga. Ni macam tu mungkin kerana gina nu pas tahan. Paling mungkin mampi rogi aje rogi tak tu ya nu mampi tirne ganda kau deh abih yutik ya. Ya nu aite beri hidin lada hari ni ya. Ya aje mah sahaya hidin lada hari ni ya. Saya sejuta yang beda kerana piris. Bisa sih mukau sih ni. Saya aje mungkin katu tu. Apa pirisat gini apa? Samahar itu yang gula pun, yang apa yang dekim damai, dawas sunyi hati rogiya pirisat itu kalau naik, tama pun itu tak. Ini yang gula dia apa rogiya mana apa lah? Gundera ul kapal itu naik dek kerela. Ini awasnya tuwal, si am tiennya orang yang ada bed teh kerela. Ini pertikara kerela. Ini ayolah puluan tanah. Buda kala nunu pirisat bawa tel, tama yang api. Samahar. Abi dekang anda bed, nakit dekang anda bed tak? Ini warga itu bau tiket tiket segel lau. Abi eh awak cuci ayam kalau eh perti kara kalla kenyu ulas dala eh awak selai mutra bata dala eh aita kisiam sahnya salah seru kita aita mekar pabat tagi nanti. Pilih kawa kian ni manusia jiwit eh dahas kani neti bena maapa apa kari rogya makin punca makin itu tamai mi asani pavele ini aita satkar kiri mete maatar pilih kah 
සරණ සංගමයේ වෙත යොමු කිරීමට කැමැත්තෙන් ඉන්න බව ඇත්තටම අපි පෞල් ඥාතීන් විදියට ගොඩක් කැමැති ඒ සම්බන්ධව කටයුතු කිරීම ගැන ඒ අරින වෙන පිළි සරණක් නැහැ අපිට Cancer Care Association is a non-profit, voluntary, non-governmental organization. And in 2019, we got a title of approved charity as well. Our main objective is to uplift the physical, mental, social and spiritual well-being of cancer patients and their family members. The Cancer Care Association runs two hospices, one in Anuradhapura and one in Mathura. The Anuradhapura Hospice, we started in 2011 and we have a capacity of 46 beds for cancer patients. Mainly, our Anuradhapura Centre runs as a transit home. for the patients who are receiving radiotherapy treatment from the teaching hospital anuradhapura pilika sarna rakawarana piyasa meka rajaye anumata punaruttapana madhyasthanaya kari liya padinchi vela thiyenawa e wageema loka sauka sangvidhanen anugrahaya dakwala thiyenawa මෙහෙට රෝගීන් එන්නේ ගොඩක් දුර පළාත් වලින් අනුරාධපුර මහ රෝහලෙන් ප්‍රතිකාර කරන අතරතුරේ විකිරණ ප්‍රතිකාර වලින් හෝ කීමෝ ප්‍රතිකාර වලට වාටුවේ නැවත එන අවශ්‍ය නිසා එහෙ ඉඩ මදි ඒ කියන්නේ පහසුකම් මදි නිසා ඒ රෝගීන් අනුරාධපුර රෝහලේ වෛද්‍යවරයෙක් නිර්දේශය අනුව තමා පිළිකසන් රැකවන පියසේ නේවාසිකව ඉඳගෙන ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ ප්‍රතිකාර කර ගැනීම තමයි මෙහෙද සිදු කරන එක එක පේෂන්ට එක එක ඇඳ ගානේ කෑම බීම ඔක්කොම නොමිලේ ලබා දෙනවා ප්‍රවාහන පහසුකම් ඇම්බියුලන්ස් එකේ රෝගීන් එක්කන් යනවා ඩොක්ටර්ස් අට පෙන්වන්න තියෙන ඒවා ඒවා ඔක්කොම මෙහෙන් අපි තමා කරන්නේ රෝගීන්ට මොන හරි ආදිසි අවස්ථාවක් වුණොත් රෝහලට එක්කන් ගිහිල්ලා ප්‍රතිකාර කරලා බෙහෙත් ඔක්කොම අපි රන් දෙනවා ඒගොල්ලන්ට ගොඩක් නිදහස් වෙ ඉන්න පුළුවන් පරිසරයක් තියෙනවා ඒ වගේම ධර්ම දේශනා වලට සහභාගී වෙන්න පුළුවන් එයාලගේ ආගම සිහි කරගන්නේ හැම කටයුතුවක්ම මෙහෙ සකස් කරලා තියෙනවා බොහෝ අය මෙතනට පැමිණියාට පස්සේ මේ රෝගීන්ව දැක්කට පස්සේ ඔවුන් ඔවුන් සමහර වෙලාවට පැමිණෙන වෙලාවේ තියෙන සිතිවිලි වෙනස් වෙලා රැකවරණ පියස වෙනුවෙන් දායකත්වයේ දරන අවස්ථා බොහෝ අවස්ථා තියෙනවා සමහර අය ආහාර වශයෙන් ඒවා ලබා දෙනවා ඒ වගේම වියලි ආහාර ද්‍රව්‍ය වශයෙන් ඒ වගේම බෙහෙත් ද්‍රව්‍ය ලබා දෙනවා ඊට කැව ගොඩක් ඊට පස්සේ ඉතින් මේ කටේ මෙතන දුවාල වුණා ටික ඒක තමයි හොඳ වෙයි හොඳ වෙයි කියක ඇති උස්නට වෙන්න ඇති කියලා කතරු මුරුන් ගකොල හරිම මාස ඊතර ජාති කැව ඊට පස්සේ ඒක වැඩි වුණා වැඩි වුණාට පස්සේ දරුවෝ දැක්කේ නැහැ ඉතින් මම ඇවිල්ලා බැන්නා awareness programs and talk to individual patients and their family members a cancer care association uh, run uh, two hospice as well as home based care that really help to improve the quality of life of cancer patient in addition to that it's it's a very strong partnership for the national cancer control program the institute of palliative medicine it's located in Nupe Mathara we have started it in 2018 with the capacity of 21 beds for not only cancer patients but other patients who needs palliative care in that institute we have 
a training center with 125 seating capacity auditorium as well as we have research center attached to the institute where you can do researches in cancer or palliative medicine. There are about 2,000 hematological malignancies reported every year in Sri Lanka. So most of these hematological malignancies or blood malignancies cannot be managed, re-stratified, prognosticated without genetic tests nowadays. So Cancer Care Association helped us immensely in providing funds to our poor patients who cannot afford these genetic tests. Cancer is not a disease like everyone will die out of cancer. There are so many types of cancers where if you detect it in early stages, you can cure it 100%. One third of cancers can be cured totally and one third of cancer we can manage and we can control and they can live a normal life. So one third of cancers we cannot do much because the patients with disseminated disease or they are terminally ill. The Premier Pate program is another important project that we conduct. It is about giving nutritional support to cancer patients. Through that, we provide free meals to patients and their caretakers and bystanders at Apeksha Hospital Maharagama. Apart from that, two hospices in Andhradapura and Mathara and the uh, Cancer Community Centre in Gaul to patients who come from remote areas in the country to undergo their treatment. Through our dry ration project, we distribute bags full of dry ration to families of pediatric patients boarded at Apeksha Hospital as well as patients who are registered throughout the country through the Divisional Secretariat. Cancer Care Association, we provide chemotherapy ports for the needy patients, especially for pediatric cancer patients. We all know breast cancer is the leading cancer among women in Sri Lanka. The patients who has undergone mastectomies, we give free of charge a breast prosthesis. It is one of our major projects. The Pibidina Kakulu project or Blooming Flowers project, which is focused on scholarships for education to children of lower income cancer victims. Anyone can donate to Cancer Care Association. We accept not only monetary donations, but you can come and volunteer, you can share your knowledge, you can do some research works with us. So there are so many ways where you can get in and work with us. Since 2003, our cancer care family has grown to over 5,000 people in this country. Please join hands with us to continue this journey. Thank you very much, Dr. Samadhi Rajapaksha, the founder of the Cancer Care Association and his team. Now I would like to invite the Kane Hospice from Jaffna to share their experiences and the services provided for the palliative care patients. Kane Hospice. Our aims and objectives provide end of life care and palliative care for the cancer patient. Transfer place for the cancer patient from our districts who receive treatment at the Lipley Trial Cancer Hospital. Promotion of community-based palliative care services. Support for the cancer control activities. Support for the cancer research programs. Experiences in our palliative care services. 
happy moments in the palliative care services when we could control the symptoms of a terminally ill patient, when we guide the patient and the family through the end of life care period, and when the patient experiences a peaceful and painless death. This is one of the most satisfying and rewarding. Patient related challenges during the palliative care services. Some expect miraculous healing from us. Some bystanders expecting us to cure the underlying illness. Scope of palliative care was not well understood by the community. Establishment related challenges during palliative care services. Human resource shortage. Doctors and nurses involved in part time basis. Getting the recognition from other units. Receiving referrals. Sometimes not getting referrals at all. Sometimes many and inappropriate referrals which we couldn't handle. Transportation distance and poor road network was an issue while doing community based palliative care. Our strength. We have natural and peaceful environment. Female and male separated ward with 24 beds. A prayer hall for all religions. Free accommodation, food and medical services. 24 hours patient care by trained healthcare assistants. Free transport facilities for the hospice patient for the treatment purpose. And cancer diagnosis test or assistance to those under poverty level with the recommendation of consultant or surgeon oncologist. Awareness program regarding cancer prevention and early detection. Palliative home care services in Jaffna and Warnia districts. Our challenges are getting drugs to fulfill the need of the cancer patient. Initiating center-based screening program for breast and cervical cancer. Conducting mobile screening program in remote areas. Expanding awareness program. Increasing cancer related test financial assistance. Constructing full pledged palliative care complex. Extending community based palliative care programs to other districts. Thank you. Thank you very much for the team of Kane House with Jeffna. Now I would like to invite the Sri Lanka Cancer Society, Shanta Sevana Hospice Maharagama, to share their experience and services. Thank you for the invitation. I am Dr. Panaguna Ratna, and I am speaking to you today as the chairman of the Shanta Sevana Hospice in Maharagama. Next slide, please. The Shanta Sevana Hospice was established by the Sri Lanka Cancer Society in 1996 and the first of its kind in the country at that time. Sri Lanka Cancer Society actually runs two establishments, this hospice and the Bandarnaika Memorial Care Home, which is a transit home and care facility for patients undergoing treatment at Apeksha Hospital. Treatments such as chemotherapy and radiotherapy. It's a short, uh, short term uh, stay. Both of these facilities are situated in close proximity to Apeksha Hospital to facilitate transfer. Our objective is to provide free palliative care to terminally ill patients while easing their emotional and financial stressors. Next, please. When reflecting on our experiences at Shanta Seven Hospice, Patients' needs typically fall into two, four categories. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, accommodation, food, medical attention, and emotional support. Firstly, accommodation. We have both male and female wards with 16 beds in each. With the exception of a negative PCR requirement during this COVID-19 pandemic, we have no restrictions on admission. When considering food for the patients, all rations are received through charitable donations, 
and the meals are then prepared on site by four cooks employed by the Sri Lanka Cancer Society. Next slide, please. In, in order to provide necessary medical treatment, Sri Lanka Cancer Society employs a medical officer on a locum basis. This officer visits the hospice and attends to patients twice a week. In the event that more complex treatment is required, this is provided by medical officers from Apeksha Hospital. We also have six nurses on staff. Three of these nurses have received formal training in palliative care, and they have in turn provided informal training to their colleagues. These nurses work with aides and other staff who provide essential support, especially with our weaker patients. We find that the most significant patient need is emotional support. Many of our patients come from all over the country and their family members are not in a position to visit them. Therefore, the companionship they receive from other patients and the staff is key to their well-being. Patients also seek spiritual guidance during this time. And the facility has four shrine areas for the four major religions for this purpose. I would say that our biggest strength is our dedicated team. Providing end-of-life care is extremely taxing, both physically and emotionally. And this is true for both patients and staff. We take care to show respect, empathy, and compassion to our patients and strive to add life to their days rather than just days to their lives. As with most hospices, fundraising is a significant challenge. In addition to food, we are also entirely reliant on donations for expenses relating to building maintenance, utilities, staff salaries, and medical consumables. And another challenge we face is in staffing. Our nursing team is currently understaffed and it is difficult to find nurses with the necessary technical skills and training as well as the right attitude. At the end of the day, we need benefactors and carers who identify with the quote by William Osler. If I can ease one life its suffering and brush away pain, I will not have lived in vain. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Panagunu Ratna and his team. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Sankar Randini Kumara, the Honorable Secretary of Palliative Care and End-of-Life Care Task Force, to share the experiences and services of the professional colleges. Good morning, everybody. I think today is a very important day as it's a hospice and palliative care uh, day, International Day of Hospice and Palliative Care, and celebrations are uh, done by the National Cancer Control Program. And it's a very important day for us as well as the uh, palliative and end of life care task force of the SLMA, because we today launched the second edition of our palliative care manual, which was a, a key publication uh, for last four years, even when it was the first edition. So uh, I have worded the, my presentation as navigation, navigating rough waters the journey of half a decade of palliative and end of life care task force of the SLMA. We started the task force under the guidance of uh, Professor Chandrika Vijayaratna, the president of the SLMA in the period of uh, 2016 and 2017. And it was in October, 2016. So almost five years have gone. And uh, the in inaugural chairperson was Dr. Dilha Samaravir and convener was Dr. Udayangani Ramadas and a lot of uh, specialists and generalists from all the colleges and associations uh, were participated in the inauguration. The main objective of the palliative and end of life care task force was just as the SLMA to be the umbrella organization to all organizations, institutions, personalities who are providing palliative care in Sri Lanka. So to be the umbrella body uh, of Sri Lanka to uh, gather and unite 
all the palliative care organizations and personalities who are providing the service. And initially, this started as a task force under the NCD subcommittee, and later on, it became an independent expert committee of the SLMA. Our specific objectives are like this, acting as a catalytic organization and playing an advocacy role with the Ministry of Health uh, to implement sustainable palliative care services in the country, linking up all individuals and organizations committed to palliative and end-of-life care across the island to create a common platform as the OPEX professional organization in Sri Lanka, the SLMA, collaborating with the National Steering Committee in Palliative Care, Ministry of Health, creating awareness among healthcare professionals and other professional groups, as well as the public by using mass media, social media and meetings, etc. Assisting in training of multidisciplinary team in the field of palliative care and end of life care in collaboration with Ministry of Health and developing end of life care guidelines and also common protocols for symptom control and promoting audit and research in palliative care. So uh, as a, in, in a nutshell, it's all about not, uh, advocacy, training the multidisciplinary team and uh, supporting them with the, the guidelines and the, the training materials, and also to uh, play a catalytic role uh, with the Ministry of Health. So uh, while keeping those objectives in our mind, uh, as the umbrella organization, the SLMA, uh, had some stakeholders meetings. All these stakeholders meetings were carried out with the patronage of the Ministry of Health. Uh, you can see some of the photos here, all the colleges, all the professional colleges, uh, all the uh, institutions which were providing palliative care and all the personalities and even uh, all the categories of staff were invited to these meetings, as you can very clearly see. And they were asked to express their ideas uh, their plans, and they were all incorporated into this uh, task force. And we were having uh, monthly meetings until this pandemic started. And uh, all the all these uh, resource persons, all the stakeholders were invited, invited uh, to the meetings. Uh, these stakeholders included the legal profession as well, the civil society as well, you know, journalists, the, the, the important people in the civil society, uh, nurses, other, prof other medical professionals and everybody. So this is sort of a, uh, that real multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary team in all levels of healthcare. So the, uh, if we take, uh, talk about the advocacy role that has been played by the, the SLMA Palliative Care Task Force, uh, our members uh, are in the National Steering Committee on Palliative Care, and they are positively providing feedbacks and their ideas to always enrich the palliative care system of the Ministry of Health and the country as a whole. And also uh, the, the palliative and end-of-life care task force has contributed uh, immensely in developing national strategic framework of palliative care in all levels, primary, secondary, and tertiary levels. And also our adv advocacy role was important uh, to initiate the MD program in palliative care to create a specialist in palliative care, which, which is the future of uh, our uh, discipline. And uh, just as our objectives, dissemination of knowledge is one very important factor. So uh, the palliative and end-of-life care task force, soon after establishment, initiated working towards that. That is, uh, within one year's time in 2017 October at the foundations, foundation sessions of the SLMA, we were able to launch the first ever palliative care textbook in Sri Lanka. That is the palliative care manual for management of non-cancer patients. And uh, having a textbook for the non-cancer patients was uh, something that was uh, only one for the world also at that moment. We understood the importance of uh, stressing the non-cancer part as well, because about 75% uh, of the palliative patients are non-cancer, even though the cancer is a very important uh, component of palliative care. So this is the first edition, because now we have the second edition also. Uh, so you can see the then the Director General of Health Services was invited to uh, for the launching ceremony of the uh, this 
first manual within one year of the establishment of palliative care task force or many experts in all levels all colleges contributed to this edition and this is what you saw today the launch of palliative care manual for the healthcare professionals in sri lanka now it's not uh, uh, confined to the uh, non cancer only now the cancer specialist and specialists from all levels and the general practitioners family physicians all have contributed to this landmark publication the palliative care manual for healthcare professionals in sri lanka which goes as the second edition of the previous manual but has a, a wide variety of uh, uh, chapters and uh, has extended to a level which can which, which has covered almost everything uh, regarding palliative care just as when we would buy uh, dr padma gunaratna the president slm in the morning and the other parts of dissemination of knowledge some of the activities are like this uh, we have contributed to the slm international medical congress in many years uh, starting from probably 2015 or before uh, there were symposia uh, panel discussions uh, and lecture guest lectures uh, that was uh, held at these uh, sessions and uh, certain foundation sessions especially in 2017 the entire foundation session was uh, dedicated to palliative care uh, uh, identifying and understanding the importance of palliative care at that moment and uh, in a uh, two in two years time we had uh, last two years time we had uh, palliative care topics in each and every regional meeting of the slma which are carried out usually in collaboration with other clinical societies around the country and uh, workshops like communication skills workshops uh, you can see certain photos here uh, with role play, plays and all and online webinars especially uh, the online webinars which were carried out by the asia pacific palliative care network uh, were uh, 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 webcasted in collaboration with the slma palliative care uh, palliative care task force and uh, it didn't end Uh, so we started the pioneer the palliative care team building in hospitals uh, this was the first program ever in sri lanka uh, building teams in palliative care in referral level hospitals which was carried out in collaboration with the national cancer control program and funded by the who uh, and you can see uh, the, the deputy director general of health services uh, ncd is also here who uh, ble- uh, who whose blessing was with us and it was a two day program with six hospitals initially six teams from the western province as a pilot project which which became a, a real success and then we know that nccp uh, carried forward the same program uh, with that success which is really uh, nice of the nccp and the public awareness uh, programs throughout in our Uh, half a decade's time uh, our members uh, contributed to print and electronic media discussions uh, articles in papers uh, um, talks and discussions in uh, electronic media like uh, television and radio and uh, you can see uh, one of the very important one uh, where the ccp ccp ceylon college of physicians had their uh, 50th uh, celebration Uh, there was a exhibition called mahajana suvadana and there was certain uh, very important uh, palliative care discussions for public uh, and lectures there was a exhibition stall dedicated for palliative care uh, at the mahajana suvadana exhibition uh, which was well uh, received and appreciated by many people as we wanted uh, people to be aware about this service and them to uh always request for that service uh so we that is the main reason for uh having public awareness campaigns and this is the website of the uh, web page actually of the palliative and end of life care task force within the website of the slma uh, here we can you can always go and see the articles related to the palliative care and uh, soon we'll be uploading the second edition of the palliative care manual also to the, to this which will be uh, instrumental in disseminating knowledge around the country without any barrier and one of the very important thing one of our uh, objectives 
was this development of end of life care guidelines you know in sri lanka there's no guidelines for end of life care and people practice in several ways and the slma thought that we as the pioneer and umbrella uh, professional association should pioneer this as well so this was not a easy task the development of end of life care guidelines were started was started in 2018 and recently only we actually uh, finished off the work uh the the palliative uh, and end of life care task forces member professor tashi shang chaired the uh, end of life care guideline committee and we had many uh, representatives from uh, all the colleges and legal fraternity especially uh, presidents council asanta kodagode uh, provided legal guidance initially and uh, now we are in the the probably in next month we would be able to Uh, launch the develop uh, developed guidelines of end of life care as well and uh, our service and our uh, objectives uh, extended to community based palliative care as well as a volunteer organization professional organization our main uh, focus was to the advocacy role but here we have gone to the community based palliative care as well uh, with the uh, kind uh, the donations of uh, reverend uh, chandu malathero uh, we uh, could uh, uh, collaborate with australian association and we started uh, distributing palliative care equipment to uh, rdhs areas regional develop uh, regional direct of health services areas in certain provinces in uh, western province in wayamba uh, province and in uh, eastern province so you can see certain medical officers and directors of health uh, health service rdhs ss are here who uh, received those donations this is uh, two years back so the, these are the dc these are some of the highlights of the palliative and end of life care task force of the slma so mainly we have accomplished most of our, most of our targets on advocacy uh, training our people and Uh, uh making public awareness as a as a umbrella body and uniting all the associations individuals and institutions and the colleges and uh, now we will be continuing uh, our object uh, our uh, service according to our objectives in future as well so thank you very much for giving this opportunity have a nice day thank you very much dr sankarandini kumar Now the session is open for question and answer round. If you have any questions, please type in your chat box. For this, to share this session, I would like to invite the, our director, National Cancer Control Program, Dr. Janaki Vidhan Patrana. Please. Thank you very much. Now we have come to an end. Uh, there are certain questions. Actually, there are a lot of uh, feedbacks uh, regarding the presentations. Actually. Uh, Uh, there are a lot of uh, comments uh, by the participants uh, for the uh, professor raj gopal's uh, uh, keynote address uh, there are a lot of positive comments uh, then sir you have done a very uh, excellent presentation like that so then actually today we uh, gathered today and more than 150 participants joined with us uh, thank you so much there are certain uh, questions uh, raised by some of the participants so uh, one of the question is to to be eligible for md palliative care is the diploma of uh, post graduate uh, the doctors pal palliative care is required for what he has asked is actually to coming up, may enter into the M md palliative medicine course in, uh, conducted by uh, Uh, post graduate institute of medicine uh, they are asking whether diploma uh, of uh, palliative medicine is required so actually now already you know there are three uh, now two batches uh, of uh, palliative uh, medicine diplomas has been have been passed out as a well last now the, another one is undergoing training so ministry has uh, requested uh, the after getting approval from the national advisory committee ministry has requested director pgm to uh, start the palliative medicine uh, md course then after that now the uh, may, uh, 
uh, board of management of the postgraduate institute of medicine they have started uh, uh, with together with this, there is a separate uh, board of study for palliative medicine now they are developing the curriculum for md course once they develop this uh, curriculum they will submit to the they will submit to the board of management of the uh, postgraduate institute of uh, medicine then uh, once they get approval they will decide the what are the recruitment criteria uh, for the md entrance so then i think there are, there are a few more months to complete the uh, uh, curriculum of the md course once they get approval they will decide the entry criteria for that so then we hope there is a very special provision they will allow for the diplomats so then uh, next one is regarding the uh, book uh, uh, launched by the slma that is a palliative uh, care uh, <coughs> book for uh, doctors so then uh, they were majority of them they want to buy this actually it is uh, we got the information from the slma office so they are giving they are uploading the soft copy uh, from next week then you can download the soft copy as well as we heard they are going to print two two thousand copies once they <laughs> print it you will be able to get it from maybe from slma office we hope we, they will provide some books for us then we will able to do that in addition to that actually if you have any more queries uh, regarding uh, anything regarding the um, palliative care you can write to us our email address is all simple letters uh, nccp moh sl at gmail dot com i will repeat it again nccp sl M, sorry nccp moh sl at gmail dot com so whatever the uh, your queries you can uh, write to us we will uh, reply you as soon as possible so then actually we had a very long fruitful day today actually uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, participation from all the palliative care team of sri lanka they shared their uh, experiences we really understand picture the road is not rosy picture but uh, there are challenges but everybody is providing care holistic care for people who need palliative care and also the <coughs> we really whatever the we are developing the guideline policies training awareness capacity building lot of things we are doing but ultimate target is the end user we heard some end user voices voice Uh, venerable dr kusuma's voice so then actually it is really happy today national cancer control program we get together with all the uh, various uh, organization government sector non government sector community sector and end users so we were able to uh, the, take all these people into under one umbrella and share their experiences so then we understood there are certain challenges faced by especially some of our uh, the care providers we are hoping to um, uh, write a big report and submit to it to the uh, ministry of health to a further improvement of our services so then i uh, <coughs> appreciate that your work you are doing for this palliative care in sri lanka there are professional colleges community group institutions now there is a newly built uh, college of uh, palliative medicine all together with the government sector consultative services the phnos who are working uh, for this palliative medicine everybody is get together we can uh, provide uh, better services for uh, sri lankans thank you very much now over to you thank you very much madam As we have come to the end of the session, 
Now I would like to invite Dr. Dumidu Vijayavadana, the Medical Officer in Charge of the Cancer Early Detection Center of National Cancer Control Program to deliver the word of thanks. Thank you, Dulanji. A very good afternoon to you all. The Additional Secretary of uh, Health, Health Services, Dr. Lakshmi Somatunga, Director General of Health Services, Dr. Asela Unavardana, the Deputy Director General, Non-Communicable Disease and Additional Secretary, Dr. Champika Vikramasinghe, Director, National Cancer Control Program, Dr. Janaki Vidana Patirana, Special Invitees, Participants, Colleagues, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of the National Cancer Control Program, I would like to thank each and every one of you being a part of this memorable occasion. To commemorate the World Hospice and Palliative Care Day this year. As you all know, this symposium was organized with the aim to be in line with the theme for this year, which is leaving no one behind, equity in access to palliative care. This symposium created a platform for healthcare providers involved in palliative care across the country to show showcase their services and voice the issues that they face. So I am sure that we have done justice to, justice to them. The National Cancer Control Program is privileged by the presence of Additional Secretary of Health Services, Director General of Health Services, and the Deputy Director General of Non-Communicable Disease, and would like to express our gratitude to, for being here in spite of their busy schedules. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our keynote speaker of this event, Professor M.R. Raj Gopal, founder chairman of the Pallium India in Kerala. I would like to express my appreciation towards some of the most important people, the participants, without whom this symposium would have not been possible. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to place on my record my thanks to the Director, National Cancer Control Program, Dr. Janaki Vidana Patirana for the continuous guidance and the encouragement, Dr. Irosha Nilavira and the palliative care team of the NCCP, the event management team, global events for the effort in making this event a success, and Dr. Dulanjali Galapati for the great job of comparing. We greatly appre appreciate and thank you for your effort and time. Thank you very much and have a pleasant day. Thank you very much, Dr. Dumindu. Thank you again for the immense support given by you throughout this program. And now we have come to the end of our session. Once again, I thank you all and have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>